Welcome all to our channel. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. In the annals of British history, the rise of King Charles to the throne is a tale that bears retelling. Born into privilege, the young prince was groomed for greatness from an early age. His life was a whirlwind of rigorous education and meticulous preparation, each step designed to mould him into a worthy successor of the crown. As he matured, so did his understanding of the immense responsibility he was destined to bear. His ascension to the throne was not a sudden leap, but a gradual climb, marked by careful deliberation and calculated decisions. The day he was crowned, the weight of the realm settled on his shoulders. It was a moment of triumph, but also a solemn reminder of the duty he owed to his people. The initial years of his reign were marked by a delicate balancing act. On one hand, he sought to uphold the traditions and customs that formed the bedrock of the monarchy. On the other, he was acutely aware of the need to adapt and evolve with the times. Yet as the years passed, the line between tradition and stubbornness began to blur. The king's decisions, once applauded for their wisdom, were now met with scepticism. The public sentiment shifted, and whispers of discontent began to echo throughout the kingdom. Now seen as a ruler clinging desperately to his throne, resistant to change and deaf to the pleas of his people. Through his actions and choices, King Charles began to craft his legacy, but not in the way he might have hoped. Rather than a benevolent leader, he was now perceived as a monarch consumed by his greed for power, willing to prioritise his own interests over the well-being of his kingdom. As we see, Charles's early reign set the stage for a contentious relationship with his subjects. As King Charles settled into his reign, his unwillingness to share power became more apparent. As the days turned into months, and then years, the monarch's grip on the throne tightened. His reign was not one of shared power, but rather a one-man show where he alone held the reins. Charles's actions spoke louder than his words. Take, for instance, his dismissive attitude towards calls for democratic reforms. While the British people yearned for a more inclusive and representative government, the king seemed to turn a deaf ear to their pleas. Instead, he seemed to be more interested in consolidating his power, even if it meant going against the very people he was sworn to serve. The king's obstinacy was not limited to the political sphere, but extended to social and economic matters as well. On more occasions than one can count, he made decisions that were clearly in his favour, but detrimental to the well-being of the populace. His blatant prioritisation of his interests over the needs of the common folk did not sit well with many. Public discontent grew with each passing day as they witnessed their king's relentless pursuit of power. The once revered monarch was now being viewed with suspicion and resentment. The people felt betrayed. Their king, who was supposed to protect and serve them, seemed to be more interested in maintaining his privileged status. The apparent greed for power was not just a political issue, but a moral one as well. It raised questions about the king's character and his suitability to rule. Yet the more the public questioned his authority, the more Charles clung to his throne. It was a vicious cycle, the discontent of the people fueling the king's determination to hold on to his power. So, as the public's discontent grew, so did Charles' grip on his power. He remained firmly seated on his throne, oblivious to the growing storm around him, his stubbornness and greed for power casting a long shadow over his reign. With the rise of Keir Starmer, a new threat loomed over Charles' reign, the threat of democratic reforms. Starmer, a stalwart of democracy, proposed a series of reforms aimed at limiting the hereditary power of the House of Lords. This was a direct challenge to Charles's authority and control, a threat that the King viewed with great apprehension. The reforms proposed by Starmer were not just a political manoeuvre, they were a reflection of the changing times. The British public was growing increasingly frustrated with the unchecked power of the monarchy, and Starmer's reforms were seen as a step towards a more equitable and democratic society. The proposed changes were simple yet profound. They sought to limit the hereditary power of the House of Lords, a move that would undoubtedly diminish the King's authority and control. But Charles was not one to take threats to his power lightly. His reactions to Starmer's proposed reforms were swift and uncompromising. He dug in his heels, refusing to concede any of his hard-won power and influence. 
His stubbornness was seen as a blatant prioritisation of his own interests over the needs and desires of the British people. This further fuelled public resentment. The British people, once loyal subjects of the King, were now questioning his authority and his refusal to adapt to the changing times. Charles' insistence on maintaining a stranglehold on his royal prerogatives was seen as a clear display of his greedy nature. His actions were out of step with the democratic aspirations of modern Britain, and the public was growing increasingly impatient with his refusal to change. In the face of these challenges, Charles showed no signs of relenting. He clung to his privileged status, unwilling to concede any of his power and influence. His refusal to adapt to the changing times and his insistence on maintaining a stranglehold on his royal prerogatives only served to deepen public resentment. His actions revealed a deep-seated greed for power that was out of step with the democratic aspirations of modern Britain. Charles's refusal to adapt to these changes only served to deepen public resentment. But the story doesn't end here. As we move forward, we'll see how Charles's greed for power continues to play out. In the face of changing times, King Charles's greed for power became more evident. His reluctance to loosen his grip on the reins of authority, despite the shifting sands of the political landscape, bore testament to his insatiable thirst for power. And this thirst seemed to be unquenchable regardless of the growing public discontent and calls for democratic reforms. The king's yearning for power was not a new phenomenon. It was as old as the monarchy itself. But what made Charles's case unique was his unyielding determination to hold on to his privileges, even when they were at odds with the democratic aspirations of modern Britain. He seemed to be stuck in a bygone era, a time when kings were absolute rulers, their power unchecked, their authority unquestioned. Yet this was not the age of absolute monarchs. This was the 21st century, a time of democracy, of people's rights, of checks and balances. And in this era, the king's refusal to adapt, his insistence on clinging to his royal prerogatives, painted a picture of a monarch out of touch with the realities of his time, out of step with the aspirations of his people. But Charles was not just out of touch. His actions betrayed a deep-seated fear, a fear of losing his power, his influence, his status, and this fear seemed to fuel his greed, pushing him to cling even more fiercely to his privileges, to resist any change that might diminish his authority. Yet the more he clung to his power, the more he seemed to lose touch with the democratic aspirations of his people. He seemed to forget that power in a democracy is not an end in itself but a means to serve the people, to work for their welfare, to heed their voices. In his greed, King Charles seemed to have lost touch with the democratic aspirations of his people. As we've seen, King Charles's actions had significant implications. His tenacious grip on power, despite the growing public discontent, painted a stark portrait of a monarch unwilling to yield. His stubbornness, his determination to hold on to his privileges, came at a considerable cost both to him and to the British people. In his refusal to relinquish control, Charles revealed a side of himself that was deeply out of sync with the democratic aspirations of modern Britain. His resistance to the proposed reforms, particularly those put forth by Keir Starmer, highlighted an unsettling truth. The king was more interested in preserving his authority than serving the interests of his people. Charles's reign became a symbol of the struggle between the old and the new, between the entrenched power of the monarchy and the growing demand for democratic governance. His unwillingness to adapt to the changing times and his insistence on retaining his royal prerogatives was a stark reminder of the dangers of unchecked power. Yet, as we reflect on Charles's actions and their implications, we must also consider the lessons we can glean from his reign. His story serves as a reminder that power, when wielded without consideration for the needs and desires of the people, can lead to unrest and discontent. It underscores the importance of adaptability in leadership and the need for those in power to remain attuned to the changing dynamics of the societies they govern. In the end, Charles's reign serves as a potent reminder of the delicate balance between authority and responsibility. It is a cautionary tale of what can happen when those in power prioritise their own interests over the needs of their people. 
It is a lesson we would all do well to remember. Thank you for joining us on this journey through King Charles's reign. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our video. Until next time, goodbye.